الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اي لحبت في الله continue on our study of هذه دعوتنا وعقيدتنا by Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi'i Allah yarhamuhu and we talked about some points very briefly about akhwan muslimin and that the sheikh was making inqar or refuting akhwan muslimin and their politics the sheikh also mentioned after akhwan muslimin he said wa aidan da'wat al mubtadi'a li annaha da'wat ila mubay'ati majhul wa da'wat fitna the sheikh also mentioned and this was pertinent to akhwan muslimin and some of the other groups of sururiyin or sururiyun and perhaps even jamaat at tabliq and some other jamaat and some of the sufi groups sufi sects is that they aside from being and falling into innovation from the various ways that they fall into innovation whether it be creed or whether it be their their organization or their methodology in establishing an islam and propagating islam or their methodology in dawa that also what you find amongst many of these groups is that they have the secret baya And this baya, ya khwane fillah, the baya, first and foremost, is something mashroor. It's something from Islam. <coughs> However, the baya goes to the imam of the Muslims, the, the khalifa, or the leader of the Muslims. And then in a situation where there's no khalifa, like we have in this day and age, in which we've had probably for approximately a uh, hundred years, a lack of, of unified or any type of unified leadership for the Muslims, you have a situation where the world community is broken into different countries. There's Pakistan, there's India, there's Saudi Arabia, there's Yemen, there's Kuwait, there's Bahrain, there's etc. And all of these nations are ruled by their own governments and their own style of government. So in a situation like that, in the fuqaha, the, in, the, in the imams of the past, spoke about this. And there was some very beneficial speech when we were studying Shara Sunnah by Imam Baba Hari, rahmatullahi alayhi, uh, that had some ta'liqat or some uh, commentaries from Sheikh Rabi bin Hadi al-Madkhali, half of Allah Ta'ala, uh, pertinent to this, this point, and one of the things the Shaykh was mentioning is that this is not something new, whereas you have the Shubahat of the Tekfiriyin and some of those groups saying that, uh, you know, now the Muslim countries are split and divided in this, but these are old divisions. Some of these divisions are very, go back in history. So the Imams of the past also dealt with this issue and said that it was permissible to make bay'ah, according to Kitab or Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf, that in a situation like that, that it's permissible to make bay'ah, the, the bay'ah, the pledge, the oath of allegiance, to the leader of your country, not your group or sect. We're not talking about jama'at. No one is saying this. And this is the point. This is what Imam Muqbil is talking about here, is refuting the concept of these groups like the Khwana Muslimin who have the secret oath of allegiance to their leaders. And, uh, and the Sururiyun also, and some of the other Jama'at uh, al-Mu'asara, some of the other contemporary uh, groups, and some of the sects as well, the sects Qadim, you know, these sects like uh, uh, some of the Sufi sects and Tariqa or Turq, some of these, some of these various uh, Sufi paths or groups, that they also have bay'ah to their imam. 
And I'm going to relate to you some firsthand experience before we continue on that the community where I'm from in Seattle, Washington, I can give you a very uh, real situation of what the Imam Muqbil Rahmatullah is talking about here and that this is a point of, uh, of Ahl Sunnah, the Minhaj of Ahl Sunnah uh, negates this concept of making the bay'ah to a particular leader or group or sect, meaning a leader in a locality. Just, okay, we have uh, 20 Muslims here, we have a masjid, and we're going to make bay'ah to our imam. Or even if we have hundreds or thousands throughout America, as we had some of the groups like Jamil al group, we have now Iqamat al we have other groups that have this secret uh, oath of allegiance to their leader. And the community that I used to function with was actually a community, a small community, predominantly African Americans, and they had Baya to Jamil al Amin. Jamil al Amin, may Allah guide him and, and assist him and, and preserve him and release him from prison and forgive him of his sins to guide him to the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was a, a, a black revolutionary uh, who struggled in the civil rights community and then became a Muslim, walhamdulillah. And from that, that revolutionary movement, groups such as his still carry that into the deen. And with this, they believe, which is very important, the concept of leadership. But they take an un-Islamic means by taking the bay'ah that goes to the, may, to the imam of the Muslims, the khalifa, as we said, or the imam of a, a country, and there's conditions for that, that this imam can protect his uh, society. You know, he has these conditions. And some of the ulama of the past, some of the fuqaha, they also mention conditions, like Imam uh, Muwardi, I think he was a shafi'i, rahmatullah a great imam, who wrote extensively in his book uh, Ahkam al-Sultaniyah and some of the other imams of the past about this concept of, uh, of, of leadership and the, and, the, and the bayat and so forth. And the point being, alhamdulillah, so I witnessed firsthand because I never took the bayat. Even though I was a new Muslim, I didn't understand that concept. And there was a lot of pressure in my community to take the bayat, but I never did. But I saw how it divided us. That although we functioned together, we strove together, we fought together, we traveled together, we did everything together as a community, but certain activities were reserved only for the people who had the bayah, who had the secret oath of allegiance to Jamil al Amin and the other uh, leaders. So whenever they would have an exclusive meeting, they would count me out. However, myself and others who did not take the oath of allegiance to their imams, we functioned and still had, they relied upon us heavily in their community. So I saw the fitna, even at a lower level, how that divided the Muslims. And on top of this, we have many stories about imams, various imams, especially in New York and other places in America in the past, that they had the bayah, this imam has the bayah, another imam has the bayah. And if those two imams don't get along, then those whole communities go to feuding and war. And this is the fitna that Imam Mukbil uh, is making a shout out to. He's, he's part of the fitna that he's referring to is this very point, is that their al-wala wal-bara goes to their imam. It doesn't go to the Kuwait and principles of the Sharia. It doesn't go to Kitabi Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and whatever their Imam has differed with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Madhab of the Salaf, they don't make, uh, they, they, they excuse those things. And this is the methodology uh, exactly of a Quran Muslimi, that they excuse their Imam in those things, but they make the sacred oath of allegiance. And I know individuals personally who would have died and some who died for their Imams and killed for the Imams. So this is the point of the danger of this fitna because this is not something that Islam calls us to, this kind of fitna. Al-wala wal-bara is the kitab illa wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is loving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hating for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not hating because of your imam or his beef that he has with someone or your particular sect or group. So we have to be careful of this hezbiyah, the danger of hezbiyah 
and where it can lead us to. So the Imam also, he referred to, and this Mubaya, Mubaya uh, is a Majhul, that taking this Baya to someone who is unknown, not known for khair, not known for anything, but sometimes the people have bay'ah to someone they don't even know. For, for example, a lot of the Sufis that have practiced this, that they have bay'ah to imams that they might not have ever met or anything. They have a picture of them. Or they know them because this is the place where they, they function in their community, but they might not know anything about the imam that they've made bay'ah to who could be a wicked fasik or even a disbeliever because of their beliefs, taking them out of the fold of Islam, believing in uh, uh, making uh, tawaf around graves and worshiping the graves and venerating the saints to such an extent that they worship them, supplicating to them, crying over them, uh, sacrificing for them. All of these things which are bid'ah and those aspects that are bid'ah mukaffara, those bid'ah that takes you out of the fold of Islam. So someone can have bay'ah to someone like this who's not even in the fold of Islam because of the shirkiyat that they practice and believe. And there's many nusus about the bay'ah. And the nus that we want to mention, and Imam Mukbil mentioned this in his book, uh, Ilhad al-Khomeini, that his, his book which was talking about the heresy of Khomeini, the Rafa the Shi'i, Shaitan, uh, he mentioned the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, that whoever innovates in this affair of ours will have it rejected. So when you make this new bay'ah, this new pledge of allegiance to someone other than the imams of the Muslims, then this uh, becomes a, bi uh, a, a bay'ah, bid'iyah, and it can lead you far astray and lead you to taking people's blood unlawfully or having your blood shed. And this is why it's a fitna. The Imam also mentioned after mentioning that it was the Tao of fitna, but I think we'll save that for the next sitting because that's actually a, a longer topic. Uh, Or actually, it's a continuation, so we'll, we'll continue on. The Imam said, Rahmatullah, he said, لَأَنَّهَا قَائِمَ عَلَى جَهَلٍ وَسَائِرَةُ عَلَى جَهَلٍ وَنُنَصْحْ بَعْدَ الْإِخْوَانَ الْعَامَلِينَ فِيهَا مِنَ الْأَفَاضِلِ بِتَخَلِّي عَنْهَا حَتَّى لَا يُضِيعْ وَقْتُهُمْ فِيمَا لَا يَنْفَعَ إِسْلَامْ وَالْمُسْلِمِينَ وعلى المسلم أن يكون همه أن الله ينصر الإسلام والمسلمين على يد أي مسلم وأي جماعة. Uh, then the Sheikh mentioned also after mentioning this this bay and the importance of staying away from it. And that's a it's a dawa, a fitna that people who call you to the bay brother, you need to take bay to a community, or you're not down with us, you're not down with somebody, you need to get down with somebody. That this is a bay'ah, bid'iyah, when you're talking about two particular imams of communities or groups that can't, uh, that don't meet the conditions of the sharia. And likewise, uh, that this is, uh, people are often making the bay'ah to people who are unknown. And then the sheikh mentioned, he said, لِأَنَّهَا قَائِمَ عَلَى جَهْلٍ He said, because this is established upon ignorance. And to continue on this, is ignorance. And we have advised some of our brothers that practice this from those that are our are, are, uh, righteous brothers to leave this, to leave this bayah, to leave this call. So that way they do not waste their time in something that does not benefit Islam and Muslims. And it is upon a Muslim. So this is very important. The Shaykh wa ala Muslim. And yukun hammuhu an Allah yansur al Islam wal Muslimin. And he said, and a person, a Muslim, should his uh, thing that he believes that he should hold as important. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> that he should hold as important is that 
that Allah assists Islam and assists the Muslims at the hands of any Muslim or any Jama'ah, regardless of, of who or how, but that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the, the most important thing is not that you have the bay'ah to a particular leader or group, or that your crew or your sect or your hizb is victorious, but rather that Islam and the Muslims in general are victorious. This should be, however that comes about, that is, uh, of course, lawful. That doesn't mean you should have hizbi and have non-sharia paths, but he's making the point that however Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to advance his religion, we should be happy that the, the deen is being advanced and that the Muslims are being assisted. And something as a fight as something beneficial Imam bin uh, Uthaymi said in regards to uh, the issue of, of, of groups and sects being established upon ignorance and that's going to lead us that's an introduction to uh, the next point that the Imam uh, talks about which is uh, the group uh, Jamaat Tablik he said uh, Imam bin Uthimi rahmatullahi said, "Kulu da'wa qamat ala jahal, la buna an yukun fiha al inhiraf wa dalal, kitab al sahwa." So in uh, Imam bin Uthimi rahmatullahi, he said, "In every type of da'wa or way of propagating to Islam that is established upon ignorance." then it will be, it necessitates that there will be misguidance and uh, going astray. And that's because if your foundation is, is misguidance, how is it you're going to establish guidance from misguidance? And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.